good morning good afternoon and good evening wherever you are uh, respected vice chancellor a uh, deputy vice chancellor uh, chief executive officer partners in health and other dignitaries and my dear graduates welcome to one and all gathered here today to witness and to celebrate the special occasion with the first cohort of uh, global leadership uh, of nursing and midwife who you know uh, uh, program and the graduates who have successfully completed the leadership training i believe the participants have enjoyed their journey to complete the leadership program over 9 months ujt has designed the you know uh, the global leadership uh, in nursing and midwifery initiative uh, as a blended program uh, with a face to face and online session a couple of years ago as we all know that owing to the covid restriction we had to switch this to an online session despite switching into an online training it was well very well received and the participants actively participated in all sessions this was made possible uh, due to the you know high level engagement of the faculties and continuous effort of the mentors uh, and to needless to mention the fullest attention of the participation participants throughout the program as we know uh, nurses and midwives are a critical part of the healthcare delivery team therefore it is very important to build their leadership skills for effective delivery of healthcare program to achieve the universal health coverage and this is the first step towards building the health force work uh, you know health workforce uh, essentially focusing on leadership by the university of global health equity and we are sure that we will continue to you know provide such initiative across the globe to strengthen the capacities of the nurses and midwife across africa in particular and beyond uh, the african continent now having said this you know i congratulate uh, the graduates who have successfully completed the first cohort of global leadership uh, in you know nursing and midwifery and i am sure you will all apply the learned skills and knowledge effectively uh, in your profession to address health equity across the globe uh, once again thank you uh, one and all for being here and wish you all the very best thank you the vice chancellor university of global health equity professor agnes binagwaho the deputy vice chancellor ugh and the dean of the school of medicine professor bebe bekele ugh and partners in health executive leadership team the associate dean of the center for global health and school of nursing University of Washington Pamela Kola fellow UGH and PIH faculty and staff the center for nursing and midwifery at the University of Global Health Equity faculty and staff the graduating nurses and midwives of the class of 2021 distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen it's my honor and privilege to welcome you to our first cohort of graduating nurses and midwives from the center for nursing and midwifery at the university of global health equity our world right now is facing unprecedented challenges from the current global pandemic that has claimed the lives of many to the recent act of aggression in europe and even here in our own africa the economic challenges we face hunger drought war disease but i want to say that despite this we are moving on positively and we will survive nurses and midwives throughout the centuries have remained unshaken and have tenaciously and consistently provided love care and support to millions ughe center for nursing and midwifery has blazed the trail in producing global nurses and midwives who will become leaders and catalysts for change love and peace 
I want to welcome you all to this graduation ceremony by quoting Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky himself facing an unprecedented act of aggression on his country. And he says, and I quote, today is not enough to be the leader of the nation. Today, it takes to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. Peace in your country doesn't anymore depend on you and your people. It depends on those next to you and those who are strong. Strong doesn't mean big. Strong is brave, brave, and brave to fight for freedom and the right to live. Today's graduation is an opportunity for our nursing and midwifery students to mark their achievements and become responsible nursing and midwifery leaders. Today is also a culmination of all the hard work of the Center for Nursing and Midwifery and the University of Global Health Equity as a whole. Welcome to the first graduation ceremony of the Center for Nursing and Midwifery and the very first cohort of the Global Leadership in Nursing and Midwifery Executive Education Program. Academic achievement is vital, not only to the student himself or herself, but to the university as an institution as a whole. I now welcome Professor Abebe Bekele, whose capable hands not only as an accomplished specialized thoracic surgeon, but also as a wise mentor and guide has capably built UGHE to such marvelous heights in such a short time and has supported me personally uh, to do this at the Center for Nursing and Midwifery. I cannot do justice to Professor Bekele's academic, clinical, research and service delivery accomplishments and will restrict myself to reading his very abbreviated biography now. Dean Abebe, I welcome you now to give your remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Judy. Distinguished guests, the Vice Chancellor of uh, UGHE, uh, the CEO, of Partners in Health in Boston, our, our dear partners in uh, the University of Washington, dear uh, graduates, colleagues, faculty, and students in Let me first begin by congratulating all our uh, graduates, the first cohort of this fantastic program that we launched last year with our partners. Congratulations, you really deserve it this, this day. Uh, I would also like to appreciate the dedicated efforts of the faculty that taught you from UGHE, led by Judy and Professor Anil, and uh, the entire UGHE apparatus, uh, our dear partners from at the University of Washington who helped us plan and execute this uh, fantastic program. Uh, congratulations to all. As Judy repeatedly uh, informed us, UGHE is committed to provision of equitable academic and research and community-based care to, uh, to contribute what it can to the development of academics, healthcare, and research in Africa. And we are trying to contribute what we can. And you are our first products in the nursing uh, uh, work we are trying to do. Nurses are an indivisible, inseparable part of healthcare, part of global healthcare, and we are committed uh, to that. Uh, hopefully, the you, the graduates of this year's uh, program, will continue to be our family members by being mentors to the incoming students, by uh, uh, contributing to the success of the second, third, and fourth cohort as we move forward, and some of you as uh, teachers, as faculty in this program. Uh, please also know that we are here for you as you move, uh, uh, as you embark on your long journey in global health, in nursing care, and a lot is expected from you as you continue your journey in, in, in global health. Congratulations again, and I'd like to conclude by uh, uh, thanking all of you at UGHE who have uh, participated and helped deliver this fantastic program, and also our partners at the University of Washington. Thank you very much, everyone, and thank you, Julie, for inviting me. Thank you very much.
Dean Abebe for your kind remarks and your unwavering and unstinting support to the Center for Nursing and Midwifery at UGHE, really a testament to your own might, I might say, in the field of this The Global Leadership in Nursing and Midwifery Class of 2021 is comprised of 22 students from five countries within and outside Africa, namely Botswana, Kenya, Malawi, Rwanda, and the United States of America. I want to now welcome Teresa Ann Graves to give her remarks on behalf of the graduating class. Teresa is a nurse manager at the District of Columbia's Children National Hospital in the United States. Her work involves the provision of equitable and community services to children in the community. Teresa's QI project, Quality Improvement Project, as part of the GLNM Executive Education Program, implemented and scaled up COVID-19 vaccinations to children in the age group five to 11 years within the community. Her work and tremendous resilience in the face of COVID-19 brought her to the attention of the White House and the United States First Lady, Jill Biden. Teresa, over to you. Thank you, Professor Judy. And good afternoon or good morning to my professor, panelists, invited guests, and fellow graduates. I am so humbled by the honor to speak to you on this joyous occasion. I just wanna tell you a little bit about my story and how I became a part of the program. So I initially learned about the Global Leadership and Nursing Midwifery Program from a physician colleague of mine, Dr. Hope Rhodes, who participated in the Atlantic Fellows for Health Equity Program offered by the UGHE in 2019. After receiving the course content for the program, I decided to apply. Once I was notified of my acceptance, I started to wonder if it was really the right time for me to participate in the program. As I was finishing my master's program, was in the process of completing the Global Health Certificate Program, and in the midst of opening two new health centers. As I began the program, I started to feel a bit overwhelmed. I also felt like that I had made the wrong decision as some of the content seemed unrelatable and foreign to me. However, as I listened to our esteemed lecturers week after week, I began to learn about the quality of the patient experiences, finances in the bottom line, disaster planning and intervention skills, as well as skills in community mobilization. On this journey, my colleagues and I shared our experiences of working through the pandemic, as well as our rewards and challenges in nursing. Through this dialogue, I learned that as nurses, we experience similar challenges in healthcare, no matter where we are in the world. Also, we may manage the challenges differently. However, we are connected globally through the love and compassion we have for our patients. The Global Leadership and Nursing and Midwifery Program has taught us how to become confident leaders in the competitive market of healthcare. And we could not have done this without the support of our extraordinary professors, coaches, and guest speakers. We'd like to thank them all for their encouragement, dedication, and the support that they provided us along the way. To my fellow classmates and colleagues, we did it. We crossed the finish line of this program. However, this is not the end. It is only the beginning of a new opportunity to advance in your professional career as a nurse leader. As a graduate and now alumni of this program, we have been empowered empowered to be change agents. We have been charged to lead by example, and we have an obligation to be advocates for our, for our teams and provide them with the necessary tools and resources to be successful in their roles. We must ensure that nurses are practicing to the top of their licenses within the scope of practice and utilizing evidence-based care. Moreover, we must continue to see opportunities for professional growth and development 
and become mentors to future nurses and nurse leaders. Most importantly, as Dr. Rose shared with us in her presentation the other day, we must always have a seat at the table when it comes to decision-making. And if there's no seat at the table for you, bring your own fold-up chair and create a space for yourself. As nurses, I strongly believe that we are the glue to patient care delivery. So let's continue to build relationships and share knowledge that will strengthen nursing care worldwide. So again, this is not the end for us. And I'm so thankful that we made this decision to stay on course with the program as we have become a part of an amazing network of nurses. And I look forward to our future collaborations. It is my hope to one day meet you all in person. And if you are ever in the States and come to Washington, DC, my door is open to you. And let us not forget that we go down in history as the first graduating class of UGHE's Global Leadership in Nursing and Midwifery Program. So to my fellow classmates, I say to you all, congrats and a job well done. Thank you. Oh, well said, Teresa, well said. The nurses and midwives of Rwanda, Africa, indeed the whole world, owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to the vision of a courageous lady from Africa. Who with others not with us today? And here I preface and say for me and for all of us with a lot of sadness, remembering our Muganga Mwiza, the late great doctor and professor Paul Farmer called Agnes Binaguaho. Her support for nurses and midwives created the Center for Nursing and Midwifery at the University of Global Health Equity, which we celebrate today. I cannot begin or even come close to describing the great work of Professor Binaguaho. And with your kind permission, ask that you permit me to read a very distilled version of her biography. Professor Agnes Binaguaho is the vice chancellor and co-founder of the University of Global Health Equity, an initiative of partners in health based in Rwanda, which focuses on changing how healthcare is delivered around the world by training global health professionals who strive to deliver more equitable quality health services for all. She is a Rwandan pediatrician who returned to Rwanda in 1996 two years after the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. Previously, she has provided clinical care in the public sector and has served the Rwandan health sector from 1996 to 2016 in high level government positions, first as the executive secretary of Rwanda's National AIDS Control Commission for five years, and then later as minister for health. She is a professor of pediatrics at UGHE, a senior lecturer in the Department of Global Health and Social Medicine at Harvard Medical School and an adjunct clinical professor of pediatrics at Dartmouth Giselle School of Medicine. She is member of multiple editorial advisory and directors boards, including the Think 20 Rockefeller Foundation, the African Europe Foundation and the AU Commission on COVID-19 Response. Professor Binaguaho is a member of the US National Academy of Medicine and the World Academy of Sciences and a fellow of the African Academy of Sciences. She has published over 240 peer reviewed articles and was named among the 100 most influential African women for 2020 and 2021. Professor Binaguaho is a recipient of the 2021 L'Oreal UNESCO Award for Women in Science for the Arab and Africa states. The 2015 Ru Prize and the 2015 Ronald McDonald House Charities Award for Excellence. Professor Binaguaho, please step up and address us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, so, uh, dear uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of Academic Affair and Research Affair and Dean of the School of the Medicine, Professor Abebe Vekele, dear C CEO, 
of Patna and Health, Dr. Sheila Davis, dear directors of the Center of Nursing and Midwifery, my dear Judy, dear director of the Center for Executive Education, Professor Anil, faculty members of the University of Global Health Equity, and uh, uh, who have contributed so much to uh, this global leadership in nursing and midwifery executive education program. We are gathered here today for a very joyful occasion to congratulate the University of Global Health Equity first cohort for global leadership in nursing and midwifery executive education graduates. We would have loved nothing more than to celebrate this important event together in, a beauty, in the beautiful Butaro campus and dear laureate, you are going to miss that. However, we are all united in spirit. Uh, and it's very important to understand that currently we are celebrating you very, very deeply for what you have accomplished this past year. Today, dear colleagues, you are graduating and you are now fully integrated in the UJG alumni family. Your passion for equity brought you to UJG. And during the past year, despite the difficulties of learning at distance, what is new for many of us, you have been trained intensively, you learn with evidence-based uh, case studies and the implementation skills that you have acquired will help you to contribute constructively to your mission. You have learned that good leadership is critical in the healthcare community and is needed to improve lives and health of population globally. It's local, it's national, it's regional, and it's globally. This especially with the lesson we have all taken from COVID-19 pandemic, which has taught us that action of good leadership, collaboration and inclusiveness made a real difference in health and wellness. And when these are not present, the consequences are dramatic. So I urge you to address this issue through solidarity, through collaborative mindset and a multi-sectorial approach. Always have the overall objective to strengthen health system because problem of your clients are systemic. So the objective is to have a systemic approach and to strengthen health system, whatever you do. So it doesn't depend on you only. You are building a system that will be inclusive, human-centered, and equity basis that will last after you and help you to continue your journey. I urge you to apply this approach in the workplace you already occupy and in the communities where you reside. You will then contribute to create resilient systems and you will impact the world because this approach, although local, will contribute to the worldwide promotion of social justice. To prepare you for this engaging work, this executive education program has equipped you with the required tools to be great advocates of inclusive holistic systemic change with leadership and managerial skills to help you improve, create and lead health system to improve the life of all, leaving no one out. You are now equipped to be the best advisor of the people who are above you. It will not always be easy but you will be helped by building and maintaining network and partnerships with people of goodwill. More importantly, always follow the best science, be evidence-based and include implementation science in all what you do 
to generate the best outcome for the communities you serve. You have been blessed to acquire those new skill set and new capacities in critical thinking, problem solving, self-reflection, confidence building, pandemic preparedness, contemporary global issues facing nursing and midwife, mental health, palliative care, leadership and decision, all which will help you to achieve social justice and equity, improve your financial and resource management skills and disaster management and quality improvement overall. And I didn't, what I have just said is not holistic. And as I conclude, my wish is that you take away from UJG the fruitful discussion that has really give you a sense during those talk, sharing incredible experience with your pair, as well as the network building capacity with your fellow and other members of the UGG family, whose effort have forged you into high caliber graduates and great global health leaders. Apply those examples and those principles that you have received, that those caring for you have collectively shows you, show you every day. You have learned to make place and system resilient. And COVID has shown us that for life of the population to continue, we need to have place that are resilient. And for the health system to continue to provide ordinary care and face exceptional threats like COVID, they need to be resilient. Now more than ever, it is your duty to go and contribute to increase resiliency where you will be. Transfer the skills you have learned at UJG and reinforce them day after day by using the network you have created. On behalf of all of us at UJG, I wish you all success in your future and over. Thank you for your attention and again, congratulations. Thank you very much, Vice Chancellor, for those warm and heartening remarks to our graduating class. We now come to the part where, because this is virtual, it tends to be a little bit difficult because this is where we would be clapping and shouting as we award the certificates. The COVID-19 pandemic changed the face of education and UGH pivoted very swiftly to meet this challenge with a robust agility that is a testament to its leadership under Professor Agnes Pinaguaho and Dean Abebe Bekele and vision. The Center for Nursing and Midwifery polled nursing and midwifery leaders from across Africa and from the responses received developed key competencies required for nursing and midwifery leaders in Africa and beyond to meet 21st century health challenges. The curriculum thus developed meets population health needs as well as health system demands. Before I award the certificates, I would like to talk a little bit about this program, the Global Leadership in Nursing and Midwifery Executive Education Program. It is an executive program that is empowering the next generation of nursing and midwifery leaders. It is enhancing the technical, administrative and management capacities of nurses and midwives. It is a nine month program made up of two week long intensives at the beginning and at the end. And these two week long intensives are synchronous and virtual because as you know, uh, we had to pivot uh, when COVID hit us in 2020. In between, we have 23 weeks of global, uh, weeks of weekly global leadership lectures from industry leaders. 
All lectures and related materials are uploaded onto Canvas, which is UGHE's learning management system, where students can access them asynchronously. Every week on Friday at 7 p.m. Kigali time, we had a weekly group discussion session based on the global leadership lecture of the week. This was just a one hour session where students were able to interact with the lecturer of that week, the material, the subject matter, ask questions, give comments and go into depth as they continued to read. This, as you can tell from this format, it allows our nurses and midwives to continue working, which is very critical, particularly around the severe shortage of health workers, particularly nurses and midwives, and even physicians and other cadres in Africa and in the world beyond. In addition to this, the students complete a quality improvement project at their workplaces using the knowledge and skills gained throughout the program to and then enhance their leadership quality. The students who undertook the GLNM program were supported throughout the program by coaches. The 2021 class had three coaches in addition to the Center for Nursing and Midwifery staff. And these three coaches were Andrew McClellan, who is a Canadian family nurse practitioner, Margaret Piri, who is a global nurse educator from Malawi, and Melissa Ogemini, who is from the US and Partners in Health Director of Nursing Education. The students benefited tremendously from the knowledge, experience, and expertise of these nursing and midwifery leaders. In addition to the above, and through our collaboration with the University of Washington School of Nursing, we received one student, Christina Mazamda, who did a 10-week global practicum with the GLNM as part of her master's in public health. Christina successfully presented her experience with the GLNM at the 24th annual MPH practicum symposium on April, on Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. To be able to surpass the challenges of the new normal is already an achievement but to be able to finish with flying colors is a victory. All our 22 students have successfully fulfilled the requirements of the GLNM, and I now call out their names to virtually receive their certificates. Congratulations to our class of 2021. Order of alphabetical, we will begin awarding the certificate to our successful students. Laban Bikorimana. Thank you, Laban. You are truly a nursing leader worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations. Tushimimana Violet. Thank you, Violet. You are truly a nursing leader worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations. Graves and Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. You are truly a nursing leader worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations. Kanakuze Adrian Chris. Thank you, Chris. You are truly a nursing leader worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations. Koechep Kirui Hilda. Thank you, Hilda. You are truly a nursing leader worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Hilda. Makwinja Kondaine Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. You are truly a nursing leader worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Andrew. Mangweape Sydney David. 
Congratulations, David Sydney. You are truly a nursing leader, worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations. Mkata Madalitso Irene. Thank you, Irene. You are truly a nursing leader, worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Madalitso. Onalena Moseki Kago Bapono. Congratulations, Onalena. You are truly a nursing leader worthy of emulations, continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Mukanshi Miniana Olives. Thank you, Olive. You are really a nursing leader, worthy of emulation, continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Olive. Mukasibo Clementine. Thank you, Clementine. You are truly a nursing leader worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Clementine. Munyambaraga. Thank you, Emil. You are truly a nursing leader, worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Emil. Nemerimana Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. You are truly a nursing leader, worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Matthew. Gizwenayo Elias, thank you, Elias. You are truly a nursing leader worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Elias. Ntirenganya Epiphany. Thank you, Epiphany. You are truly a nursing leader, worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Epiphany. Jean Damou Nirimpue. Thank you, Jean Damou. You are truly a nursing leader, worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Jean Damour. Pofedi Lolamang Nametso. Thank you, Nametso. You are truly a nursing leader, worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Nametso. Titani Cherotich Dorin. Thank you, Doreen. You are truly a nursing leader, worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Doreen. Umutesi Magnifique. Thank you, Magnifique. You are truly a nursing leader, worthy of emulation. Continue. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Magnifique. Uimana Tade. Thank you, Tade. You are truly a nursing leader, worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Tade. And last but not least, Uwingabire Force. Thank you, Faust. You are truly a nursing leader, worthy of emulation. Continue to inspire others with your dedication and love for nursing. Congratulations, Faust. Thank you, all of the students. At this time, I would like to award the giant intellectuals who have used their wits, talents, and skills to win the following five awards. The first one is the University Book Prize and for her dedication 
the best candidate in attendance, constructive debate, and fulfillment of learning tasks. This goes to Clementine Mukasibo. Well done, Clementine. For their work in their quality improvement project, and they tied at the top place, this award, the Project Excellence Award, goes to Jean Damo Nirimpue and Elias Gizwenayo. Congratulations to you both for your good, good work in your QI project. For her exemplary leadership and professional influence, Forstu Wingabire receives the Leadership Award. And for surmounting global obstacles, the Best International Student Award goes to Teresa Ann Grave for her performance. And last but not least, for demonstrating outstanding regional excellence, the Regional Africa Award goes to Madalitso Irene Mukata. Congratulations to all of you and well done. Well, to the graduates of the Global Leadership in Nursing and Midwifery class of 2021, May this achievement inspire you to win more battles, garner more recognitions and achieve more victories in life, conquer your future, congratulations. And to inspire our GLNM graduates today as they conquer their future, I welcome an, an individual who is an incandescent example of global nursing leadership and who has been the bedrock of nursing and midwifery, not only in her native United States, but also around the world. I cannot do justice to her many accomplishments in the short time we have today. So allow me to restrict myself and read her shortened biography. Dr. Sheila Davis is the Chief Executive Officer of Partners in Health, a global health nonprofit organization rooted in social justice that brings the benefits of modern medical science to impoverished communities in 11 countries. With a staff of over 19,000, PIH works to ensure that the universal human right to quality healthcare is realized. Dr. Davis has a long history of serving the poor and marginalized, starting with her work with the HIV AIDS community in the 1980s, both in the US and abroad. Dr. Davis received her BSN degree from Northeastern University in 1988, her Master of Nursing degree as an adult nurse practitioner in 1997, and her doctorate in nursing practice with a concentration in global health in 2008. Both her graduate degrees are from the MGH Institute of Health Professions. She was a clinician in the Infectious Diseases Clinic at Massachusetts General Hospital for over 15 years, and for the past decade has held multiple cross-site roles at Partners in Health, including Chief of the Ebola Response, Chief of Clinical Operations, and Chief Nursing Officer. Dr. Davis is a frequent national speaker on global health and clinical topics, including HIV AIDS, the Ebola epidemic, leadership in public health, and the role of nursing in human rights. Without further ado, I warmly welcome Dr. Sheila Davis. Thank you so much, Judy. It's so, so wonderful to be here today with you all. Um, I wanted to acknowledge the, the wonderful people here today, certainly Vice Chancellor um, Dr. Agnes Benaguahu, Dean um, Bekele, the esteemed faculty and staff of UGHG, as well as uh, wonderful partners, and also importantly to the graduates of this leadership program. It's a, quite an honor to be with all of you today. I don't know if my slides are, are there. If not, I can proceed. So, um, you know, when and when I was asked to, to come here today, I always love um, anything that has to do with nursing. And I just returned from Rwanda 
and was able to spend time with um, such a, amazing nurses working at the Partners in Health um, uh, sites throughout um, uh, Rwanda and also um, was so fortunate enough to spend some time on the UJG campus. And it's, it's important, I think, for all of us to reflect on uh, how we all achieved and how we all are, are where we are today. Um, and wanted to just reflect a little bit on nursing in general. We know that globally nurses and midwives um, provide more than 80% of the care and make up approximately 59% of the healthcare workforce. And we know that the, the world's global nursing shortage is just getting worse. Certainly the COVID-19 pandemic um, um, caused there to be even more of a challenge with, with workforce, um, all different types of cadres. But nurses, I think indeed, did bore the brunt of the pandemic as nurses, as we often do, um, being on the front line of the provision of care. So we know that um, to provide universal health coverage, the minimum um, amount of nurses that we will need with the current projections, there's gonna be a shortage of almost 6 million um, and it was in 2018. And we know that now with the pandemic that it's, it's uh, even more. We also know that 80% of the world's nurses are found in countries that account for only half of the world's population. So we're, although we, we believe ourselves to be in a nursing shortage in the US, and we certainly are in many settings, um, certainly rural areas are more hard hit, um, as well as inner cities, it, it pales in comparison to the severe shortages that are happening, certainly in the continent of Africa and many other places where there are fewer resources, which makes the impact even be stronger. Across one, one PIH, which is the one PIH community and family of which the University of Global Health Equity is our foundational academic um, setting, uh, nurses and midwives make up more than half of our clinical staff and provide expert quality care in a variety of specialties, including primary care, oncology, surgery, critical care, um, and obviously maternal and child health. The goal being of, of the nurses of the 1PH system is to provide care for the most vulnerable. Um, Dr. Paul Farmer, who, who we sadly lost, who was the founder of of um, one of the co-founders of Partners in Health and also of the University of Global Health Equity um, was a, a staunch champion of nurses and was a, a, a dear friend and his loss will continue to um, be part of our lives for, for um, ever, I, I fear. But he really was um, such a, um, a, a champion, as I said, for nurses and often referred to nurses as the heart of medicine. And it was very evident whenever you were talking to Paul or, or spending time with Paul, that he truly values every member of the health workforce, um, walk, walking many, many, many kilometers with, with community health workers and nurses and, and other physician um, colleagues. He really, I think, was able to see nurses provide the, the best that they could and see nursing at their best. Um, we also um, know that the uh, and for nursing to really play the pivotal role we need it to, we need nurses to be leaders. You are all leaders who are in this program. You obviously um, were were picked amongst um, a, a number of of applicants who were also stellar, but you were chosen for a particular reason. Um, to uh, be able to take what you learned during this fellowship and apply it to be able to improve your own role as a leader, but most importantly, those around you and ultimately um, our, our bosses, which at Partners in Health are our patients. A few days um, um, before Paul uh, passed away when he was in Rwanda, he, he sent me a picture of, of uh, nurses teaching uh, medical students and residents how to do a echocardiogram. And he said, um, and I have saved this WhatsApp as I will forever, that nurses have always been my best teachers. 
And I think that's it, it's a, a, a true um, and very glad that the University of Global Health Equity is also investing in nurses and nurses as leaders, because we know that for us to be able to work as part of our interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary team, we need to have people who are be able to work to the top level of their skill and their education, and that nurses being systems leaders will need to step up even more to be able to ensure that the highest level of evidence-based care is being delivered. Although we talked about um, at the very beginning that, that the severe shortage of nurses, we know that nursing leadership is also such an area where there is such a shortage. And out of a, a, a state of the world's nursing report in 2020, we saw that um, a total of 82 out of 115 countries reported having national leadership positions with responsibility for providing input into nursing and health policy. Um, and approximately 90% of the nursing workforce is female. And there are few leadership positions in health in healthcare had by nurses or women. Um, and often you see in, um, in many places when there are leadership positions, in nursing, they are held by men. Uh, we certainly need and want all of our, our male colleagues as well and know that, that um, there is extraordinary um, men included in this, this leadership um, program as well. But it is also an important thing for us to look at in terms of the ability for nurses to be able to have the skills they need to be able to achieve the highest that they can. At, at Partners in Health, we are we have always um, been committed to ensuring that uh, when nurses get to the table, um, and I loved the, the quote of that Judy from a, a colleague said at the beginning that if there's not a seat at the table to bring your folding chair. And we've also um, been so committed to ensuring that nurses are best equipped when they're at that table to be able to stay at that table or even more importantly, bring people uh, from that table to the actual bedside. And whether that's the bedside in a hospital or into the community where care is, and that's where nurses do shine. We know that nursing education is different than medical education. Um, and that there's some skills that we need to ensure that we all have and we're able to um, teach each other and, and utilize each other as peer support, utilize each other as our, our champions in settings. And if, there, if you're at a setting where there's not another nurse at the table, that you're the one who invites other nurses to the table. This is, is an important part of our, our, our profession as a nurse, our history as nursing, is that our community is, is a strong one and we're advocating not only for our patients and the families we serve, but advocating for each other and advocating that nurses are brought to the table and insisted that that, that representation is there and the ability for nurses to flourish in settings of um, where they're providing care is critical. I know that there's a lot of challenges ahead. This, this post-pandemic world is, is or, or in the middle of this ongoing pandemic, it has stretched resources. We're also entering a, a, a time of global uncertainty in terms of the uh, global economy. We know that there's, um, we're, as, a, as global citizens, the COVID-19 was just the first of, of many pandemics that will, will unfortunately impact us at, in such a, a large scale way. So we, we know that this is a time where the stress on nursing is, is quite evident, but also the time that we can rise up at, to these challenges um, and be able to show our leadership in, in times of, of a global stress and, and global uncertainty. I'm always very proud to be a nurse. And um, when I was in, in Rwanda, I think I was in Karehe, and I think some of you were there, um, and a colleague introduced me as um, that I used to be a nurse. And, and I corrected them and said, I'm, I'm still a nurse. I think I'm an effective CEO because I'm a nurse and the skills that I 
uh, attained being a nurse um, are, are what drives me um, and is a very important part of how I function as a leader. I think when we look at some leadership, um, some lessons I've learned along the way, I just wanna end with a few of those. I think it's important that we look at um, the moral imperative we have to provide care and to ease suffering. This happens certainly in, in our, our lives every day and in the, our patients' lives, which are so challenging. But it is critical that as nurses, um, we step up and uh, respond even in difficult circumstances to provide and, and the care that's needed and be that moral compass for what's happening around us. Also, the cost of inaction is quite high. I think this is something that, that Paul Farmer did teach me quite, quite eloquently that um, you're making a decision by not making a decision. And although there are never gonna be enough resources for what we need to do on a day-to-day -day basis until the world changes its, its, its focus uh, to care for, another, care for one another in the way we should, but that we have to not let lack of resources stop us from providing the care that we need to for those who are in front of us. And by not doing that, there are certainly the costs to that, which certainly include, most importantly, human suffering and, and uh, human loss of life. Also, a, a, another, I think, important lesson I learned was trusting um, uh, my instincts. As a young nurse, we all know that that is that gut feeling that uh, even if the vital signs were telling us something different, that we knew that there was something that patient was not doing well and had to step in and be an advocate and, and spend more time with that patient, even when it's at, at that point, the evidence was not there, but we knew from our, our sense of, of um, connecting to other humans, we knew that that was critical and important. So trusting your instincts away from the bedside is also really critical. And making it about the people and keeping it centered around people is, is very, very critical. Also as a leader, I think finding your authentic leadership style is very important. I think there is many who would say nurses when they become in leadership positions should take on the, um, the the style of other leaders who have been before us. And I think that's a mistake. I think it's critical that we are authentically ourselves. Um, and that is often very much around connecting at, as humans first, um, but also projecting and being clear about what the intentions are. It's important that we build consensus um, in as much as we possibly can, and also in the, uh, as a collaborator, but it's also critical that nurses step in and are decisive and make decisions when we need to. And that doesn't make you a, a less of a collaborator. It actually makes you a, a stronger leader, um, I think, in knowing when to make decisions. And it's okay to say you don't know. I think a sign of a good leader is somebody who says, I don't actually know the answer to that, but I know where to find the answer to that, and I'll get back to you. And that, I think, is a, a sign of, of a true leader and not a sign of weakness, but rather a sign of strength. Live into what you believe is also very, very important. I think as, as we're fighting on this journey for global health equity, it's critical that we continue to employ that in all aspects of our work and our lives. And um, those who were coming behind us and teaching and you as leaders have people who are rely on you and look to you for your skills and your mentorship and your guidance and your strategic vision. It's critical that, that we live into um, what, what we believe and what our foundation is. Being cre creative and innovative is also very important. I think it's clear that we need new um, new directions, we need new problem solving um, ways, we need ways of approaching the same problems we have for many years, and allowing yourselves to be creative and innovative is, is very critical. 
So I think it's it's important as nurses to live into what makes us good nurses, what makes us be good leaders, and also being willing to step out um, and um, being bold and courageous on behalf of our patients um, and by, on behalf of those whose voices do not have a place at the table and bringing those with us is also very, very critical. Being nimble is also another thing that I think is, is a critical uh, uh, place where nurses who we learned how to triage, um, uh, we, learned, we learned how to multitask very, very early in our careers. And I think that's an important thing we incorporate into ourselves as leaders. That doesn't mean we don't set goals and strategically work towards those goals, but also acknowledging where we may need to shift our direction a little bit right or left is also a critical piece of how we can be effective. When there's, uh, I think, a, a time of, of challenge for all of us, and this is certainly one um, at uh, Partners in Health and, and the University of Global Health Equity without our, our strong North Star of, of Paul Farmer, I, great, I take great, uh, solace in knowing that we're surrounded by amazing leaders. And instead of, of maybe one person being seen as, as the, the moral clarity or the North Star of Partners in Health, I think that there's pieces of the important vision of global health equity in all of us. And the, the piece where we're going to be challenged, and I think in living into the legacy of Dr. Farmer, will be how do we as a global community bring those pieces together so that together we're not just uh, continuing the work of, of Paul in his fight for global health equity, but we're challenging that and pushing in that and iterating and evolving even more. I think nurses play a critical role in this certainly throughout the one PH family, but critically for all of the places that you all work. And we're so impressed to read your bios when you first began this program. And you all have such an influential um, uh, place in where you're currently working and will grow into work in other places. And use that power for good, use that power to challenge yourself, use that power and that privilege to bring others to the table and continue to really push that nurses have a place in, in um, decision-making around um, healthcare delivery, not because that we deserve to be there as nurses, that that wouldn't be the, the right approach, but more that, that it's important that we're there because we have the skills we have, because we have the close proximity to patients and families and communities. And that's why we're well-suited, well-prepared to be at the table. So I congratulate all of you. I'm very excited to, to work with many of you again. And I know that you'll contribute greatly, not only to the scope and sphere of where you're working, but also to the global nursing community. And know that you're once you're part of, of Partners in Health and the University of Global Health Equity, you're always part of our, our family. So look forward to continuing to have uh, ongoing relationships with all of you and very excited to see the future. So congratulations again. Thank you very much, Dr. Sheila Davis, for those inspiring remarks. Class of 2021, you have dreams, goals, and aspirations. And as you graduate from the UGHE Global Leadership in Nursing and Midwifery Executive Education Program, take with you both your successes and failures. And you don't let success inebriate or failure cripple you. Be the ambassadors of UGHE and nursing and midwifery leadership. The Center for Nursing and Midwifery at UGHE extends its heartfelt gratitude to all of you for taking your time to be part of us and celebrate with us today. We enjoy the ceremony. Again, congratulations to our graduates. Farewell for now and good day to everyone.